watching a drama or am I listening to a radio play? Why? Hello, you're watching Avenue X. We're junkie on good storytelling, shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Hui Langting, the murder in Kailo De. Sorry about the Japanese pronunciation. It's a 12 episode mystery crime thriller drama from the platform Youku. It's led by Zhang Xincheng and Deng Jiajia, directed by Li Yatao, written by Zhang Shidong, Cao Fei. And at the point I'm making this video, it has aired eight episodes, which means there's only four episodes to go. This is Avenue X's rent video about this drama. If you happen to have already watched this drama, liked it very much, quit now, okay? Mental peace, I think, is always the priority <laughs> for everybody, particularly living in 2022. If you're ready to hear what I want to say about this drama, well, sit tight. This drama is based on a Japanese novel written by the very famous Japanese crime detective story writer Dong Ye Gui Wu. That's his name pronounced in Chinese. Higashi no Keigo. You probably have heard of him. And his works have been adapted, not just in Japan, but in China and other places. The drama is shot in Chongqing. Yeah, there's no way to escape from the fate that my hometown now is the crime city capital of China on screen. The unfortunate thing about this drama, and probably the only thing that I can excuse it, I can think of, for it to have such an embarrassingly bad quality, is they were so unlucky. They started shooting January 2020. Right after they started shooting, bam, pandemic. They got stopped and locked down for three, four months until they resume in April. For production, that is detrimental because that means you're losing a lot of money, budget, on things that you didn't plan for. Then once you got back to filming, it could be because not everything has gotten back to normal operation. Your plans all get screwed. Renting a place to shoot, your locations could totally be scrapped. And you can almost tell in this drama, if you're watching, there are so many things taking place in places that looks like they just grabbed that place on the day. They didn't plan to do it there, or originally they had different places, now they couldn't get to it. Those are some of the basic information of this drama. I'll give it at this point one landmine rating, and it's a pretty low rating already from Avenue X regarding the dramas we've seen this year. And then if you've read the original novel, and then go and watch this drama, you'll find it's almost unrecognizable. Briefly telling you what the story in the drama is, which is there's a girl, played by Deng Jiajia, who is in charge of this big company's finances. I don't know how she can get to that position when she's like, what, in her early 30s? It just doesn't happen in reality. You have to be at least 40 to, to, to helm that kind of company, but hey, it doesn't matter. Main characters are superhumans, and she was entrusted with this task to go and search for the illegitimate son of the big, big boss so that the guy can inherit this old man's money because the old man is dying. The logic of that makes a lot of sense, eh? He entrusted an employee <laughs> of his to go and do such a private matter. Deng Jiajia plays this woman who goes out to find this guy who ends up being Zhang Xincheng, and that's the story. Before I start to rant about everything I want to rant about about this drama, there's one thing that I think it may make it watchable for you, or I've heard people like it for that reason, which is the two leads and their chemistry, because there's a lot of romantic thing going on between them. If you really like Zhang Xincheng or Deng Jiajia, it may still be watchable for you. Also, if you get the chemistry, it may be enjoyable, because I've seen multiple people telling me that they really like it. So you could definitely be one of those people where that chemistry works on you, and if that's the case, good for you. Because you're not wasting your life, not like me, watching eight episodes and feeling I'm being tortured. So I've said the good thing about it <laughs> from other people's perspective that I couldn't personally understand, but I respect. Now let me talk about all the things that makes me super confused about the quality of this drama. Number one, oversaturation of handheld. This drama, at least by eight episodes, of what the drama itself is needs no handheld. Although it's advertising itself as mystery crime thriller, it really has none of that <laughs> by this point. There's not even one scene that is super high pressure and is on the brink of some kind of dangerous action and you need that handheld to feel the disturbed mental state or whatever of the main characters. And yet this drama uses handheld whenever it can. I've rented about handheld overuse of it uh, from the Yang Yang special force soldier drama recently. This one is worse. 
it makes that drama's handheld looking like masterpiece of camera work because there are so many scenes when the handheld is happening, it feels like they haven't rehearsed it. The actors, directors, cameramen haven't walked through or blocked the scene at all before they shoot it. The cameraman doesn't know where to point his camera. It's like the home video that your father makes because it's happening in real life and there's no rehearsal. So this person doesn't know where to point. You have to see what happens and then move the camera. Therefore, it has that time lag. In this drama, you'll see it happens. It's like they haven't walked through it and oh God, it's so bad. Number two, I think that probably annoys 99% of people watching this drama is <laughs> voice over. You hear this guy's voice, mature male, uh, narrator of a <laughs> audio play or a radio play. He's there all the time. He would literally be explaining in his very smooth Mandarin what is happening on screen that people can see with their eyes. For example, this old guy at this point didn't expect he'd receive this letter telling him that he has an illegitimate son. While this guy on screen is taking that letter out and reading it. What part of visual storytelling do you not understand about you can show that on camera, you don't need to have a person say it out at the same time. And this happens all the time. It happens at when they want to introduce a character, who they are, what they're doing, what they have done. It even happens when there's the character who's just sitting there and smoking and the voice comes in and telling you what he's thinking about. Ah, am I watching a drama or am I listening to a radio play? Why? Third thing, I've already said it. I'm just going to quickly mention that again. It has nothing to do with the original story. The other thing about this drama is it's been promoted from day one as a xuan yi in Chinese, which means suspense. So it's basically suspense drama to be most accurate translated. More sort of common in the West, you call it mystery, thriller, crime, you know, kind of mixture of those elements. From day one, it's been promoted like that. And because it's based on the book, who is written by the author who is known for this kind of genre of stuff. And the original story is like that. So <clears throat> everybody believed that they're in for a thriller. And then, like I said, if you're watching this drama by episode four, you still don't see any of the element. And by episode eight, you're like, seriously, what am I watching? They really didn't bother to do any suspense. I am so baffled. <laughs> by the whole existence of this drama. So the next point is what does it look like if it's not a thriller or suspenseful story or crime story or mystery? Well, it's like a romantic story about two rather attractive young people um, who kind of get forced to fall in love because the plot says so. And then as they are doing that along the line, there's a super child play business war story attached to it. If like not having any suspenseful element isn't the worst crime of this drama, then <laughs> the child play business war part definitely will make you just like laugh. It's very hard for a drama reviewer trying not to spoil the drama for you, but then also like telling you exactly what they're doing. You don't even have to go through business school or of any kind. You don't have to know anything about how to run a modern company. You just have like common sense and then you watch this drama about how they play the game of power play between different members and you're gonna laugh, okay? It's so funny how big money gets used, how one person is like pretending to be super clever and I have outsmarted you, but then how they did it was like, huh? This is like what you're thinking of, really? The drama is filled with that. Every time it comes to business decisions and business wars supposed to make the female lead looking super clever or whatever, oh my God. <laughs> Clap for the script writers. The audacity of basically writing that and also put your name to it. At least I know if I happen to somehow unfortunately <laughs> throw this thing out of whatever reason, I'm not gonna want people to know about that. Hmm. After I've watched the first four episodes or something, I had this metaphor made up in my head and I said it on my social media in China. Uh, I'll repeat that here, which is what this drama makes me feel as an audience member, but I also feel actually probably the main creatives of this drama is also feeling like this, which is watching this drama feels like you are queuing a big queue and you think you're queuing it for taking a COVID test and you've queued for three hours. Finally, it got to you 
and you realized, shit, this is actually a cue for buying limited edition of cake that only bakes like a hundred every day. And it's not just for the audiences to feel like that watching this drama. I feel like when the people who are making this drama, they probably feel like that too. And that also feels like the director doesn't know what the cameraman is doing, the cameraman doesn't know what the director wants, the actors do not really know who their characters are, they're trying their best. I just feel so sorry for Deng Jia Jia and Zhang Xincheng. I hope they did get paid properly. <laughs> they probably did. So, wouldn't feel so sorry in that respect. But as actors, right, who are both known to be very good at their age, and they can do phenomenal work, given the right script, proper script, proper directing, proper production. Basically picking them to play those two roles is a total waste of their talent. The production doesn't deserve these two lead actors. So at the end of this, rent video, like I said earlier. You can still watch this drama for a bit just to see if the chemistry thing works and if it works on you, you know, it's still watchable. But if that doesn't work on you, don't waste your life on watching this drama. You will have much better things to do. That would be the end of this rent video from Avenue X, my genuine honest opinion on the drama Hui Lang Ting, which I wish I could erase from the work portfolio of Deng Jia Jia and Zhang Xincheng. Oh, and this drama has, has a very <laughs> ridiculous sports car racing scene. There's so much slow-mo use and <laughs> for one moment, you're like, what am I watching? And why does this happen? And then what happens afterwards is even more ridiculous, defies every understanding of the, uh, the world we live in and how things work. Anyway, if you get to that point and you're still watching, you'll know. If you don't, don't worry, you're not missing anything. Thank you for watching Avenue X. Hope this has saved your time. <laughs> not wasting life on things that really doesn't worth your attention. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching. Lucky drama picking. Hmm.